What's up everybody, Shri Kanasa here. So I often get asked the most important question out there when it comes to Google Ads, which is how do you improve your ranking when it comes to Google Shopping Ads and how do you rank number one to number two, maybe even number three? And this is an age old question, which is always going to have sort of a different answer based on what phase Google Ads is in. So what I'm trying to say is during the beginning in 2019, 2020, there was a completely different answer as to what could actually get your ranking number one, number two, number three, improving your Google shopping ranking in general and comparing that to now, the answer is totally different. But this video is bound to teach you a thing or two when it comes to ranking number one, number two, number three with Google shopping ads. And if you're not already there, what you can do to improve those rankings. But I'll greatly appreciate it if you can improve the ranking of this video by smashing that like button down below. It's really not gonna take more than two quick seconds and really helps out this channel. Okay, hopefully you have smashed the like button down below. But before we understand how to improve your ranking with Google Shopping Ads, it's important to know why this is so important and why I keep on pestering you guys Keep on hammering this topic inside your head that you need to improve your Google shopping rankings. You need to focus on getting better when it comes to Google ads. So you build a profitable e-commerce brand. So right here on my screen, I have my own e-commerce brand open. And right now we are looking more towards the beginning of this e-commerce brand. So November 5th, 2019, all the way up to July 26, 2020. So about eight months worth of data right over here. And you can see a lot of things happening with this data. So first things first, from this time period from the beginning all the way up to this portion of the year so basically in mid March everything was steady there was no kind of great success I was achieving things were just kind of moving along and by the way this is exactly how e-commerce works this is how success with e-commerce looks like and all of a sudden boom right there you can see it just went up it just went crazy the conversion value over cost was pretty consistent but most important of all i was making much more in revenue than i was making ever before so if we change this to conversion value we can see that it literally jumped up from maybe one thousand two thousand dollars a day all the way up to eight thousand nine thousand even ten thousand dollars a day and the beautiful thing is my ad spend as you can see on the day i made about eleven thousand dollars in sales was eight hundred twelve dollars that's right over a 10x ROAS. I know these numbers are crazy, but trust me, I wasn't born super smart with Google Ads. I don't have any special powers. I'm just following a set of strategic techniques which help me and my products time and time again hit these kinds of results without too much effort. So this really has to kind of tie back into the CPCs I was getting and the main reason I was successful. So if we kind of change this now to looking at the average CPCs, we can see what was happening with the CPCs, whether they were increasing as my results were increasing or if they were kind of steady. So first things first, you can see the CPCs in the beginning were actually very, very high. So 23 cents, it's considered high with my account by the way, but it went all the way up to about 40 cents, 42 cents. This might be crazy for a lot of people, I know, but this was kind of a high number for me during that time. And that's when I actually realized that the, there was a really a strategy behind lowering these CPCs. So in the beginning, I was just messing around, playing with a lot of different strategies, just trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And after I figured it out, which was about four to five months after starting Google Ads, basically start of January, you can see what starts to happen to my CPCs. They just start to go down. And then of course, there's a time period when they increase slightly, but that's just bound to happen because I now am scaling to the moon. I'm doing a lot of ad spend daily and adding a lot of products daily. So because of that, CPCs did go up. But before that time period, the main reason why this boom in sales in revenue and profits occurred was due to this little area right here. This was the catalyst, which kind of boosted everything up which kind of let google know that i am a good advertiser and google should basically favor me over everybody else and that's exactly what google did but during this time period when my cpcs had started to go down there were a lot of other things happening first things first i was spending a lot of less money per link click so it's kind of common sense that when you're paying 50 cents per link click you are getting two link clicks per dollar spent but if you now divide that cpc in half so instead of 50 cents you're only 
only paying 25 cents per link click, you now get double the people for that same dollar in ad spend. So as you can see, my CPC is right here for some of the campaigns, 14 cents, 16 cents, 8 cents, 33 cents. And no, I did not set a bid limit of 15 cents or 14 cents on this campaign. In fact, this was a smart shopping campaign during that time. So I wasn't really even telling this campaign what CPC or what bid limit to run it. But during that time period, this was actually a campaign running on maximized clicks with a bid limit of around 40 cents. So I wasn't really aiming towards a 14 cent CPC. Google just rewarded me because of the things that I did right with this e-commerce brand. But because of that, again, I was paying much less in ad spend. Next thing, when I started ranking higher with Google Shopping because I was doing everything right, my CPC started to go down. So the main reason why my CPC was so low because I was consistently ranking number one, number two, number three for majority of the products. And that was only because I was doing a lot of things right. And ultimately what this led to was me getting a lot of sales because I was getting more customers on my website for cheap. Google was sending me the best kind of traffic possible. That's why my overall account ROAS is a 6.81. So I did over half a million dollars. So $600,000 at a 6X ROAS, which is just nuts for a lot of people. But that's what happens when you improve your Google shopping ranking. So that's essentially what kind of happened to me when I improved my Google shopping listings, when I started ranking more towards the front by improving where I was ranking. But let's now start talking about exactly what ad rank, where you rank specifically with Google shopping is determined by. And there's no real secret answer to this. Everything is very straightforward, self-explanatory. All you need to really be doing is getting a few things right. Number one thing you need to get right, the CTR. So if you guys look at my CTR right over here for this account, and it doesn't look like CTR column is chosen. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to columns. We're going to add that CTR really quick. So let's go ahead and go to performance and make sure CTR is chosen. It is chosen for some reason. It's not really showing or I'm just blind. I don't know which one it is, but what we're going to do is we're going to place it right after clicks. So this is what I like to do. Clicks, average CPC, and then CTR and just hit save and apply. And by the way, make sure you have your column set up just like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at CTR. So you can see the CTR was very, very close to a 1%. This is why I'm always pestering you guys to make sure that your CTR stays as close to 1% as possible. I was really doing well with this account, a 0.93% CTR. And that's what really led to this massive growth growth with my ad account. But CTR and expected CTR are only one of the metrics. The next metric that you need to get right is the landing page and ad relevance and the ad experience. So what that essentially means is if you are trying to sell apples, make sure you have keywords related to apples on your landing pages. Make sure you have keywords related to apples on the actual shopping listing title, all of that stuff. Because if you have, for example, oranges in the title and you're trying to sell apples, there's kind of a mismatch between what you're trying to sell and what you have written right over there. And Google does not like that. So if your landing page experience, your ad experience, your ad relevance, those are not on point. What Google is going to do is it's going to diminish your ranking. It's going to start putting you more towards the end because again, your CTR is going to be impacted. Your ad rank quality score, those metrics are going to be impacted. So you want to make sure that whatever you are trying to do with your landing page ad itself matches each other. So make sure there's a lot of relevancy between each. But that brings me to the next point, which is bids. And by the way, we're going to go over each one a little bit more in depth, but bids, it's just pretty self-explanatory. Don't have too low of a bid. I didn't have a too low of a bid. Google decided to lower my bid for me because I, again, I was improving my rankings. But along with bid, what you want to most of all focus on is user experience. So now that we covered what really determines where you rank with Google Shopping, let's now understand each one step by step. So first one, ad relevance. Again, the number one thing you want to focus on is what the user is searching for equals what you are trying to sell. Again, if it's like apples that people are searching for, but you're trying to sell oranges or vice versa, whoever is searching for apples doesn't want to trade in for an orange because, you know, they want apples, not oranges. So that's where really you want to make sure your ad relevance comes into play. Whatever the user is searching for, give it to them. The formula needs to equal each other. That's when you get this number correct. That's when your quality score gets impacted positively. But in addition, make sure you're optimizing your product feed because ad relevance is also determined by how your feed is, what you have written in your feed, etc., etc. So always make sure that whatever you have inserted in your feed, first of all, you provide all of the information necessary, at least for your winning products, but also the information you provide is accurate. Again, what people are trying to buy should equal what you're trying to sell. So keep that in mind, because once you keep that in mind, your CTR is automatically going to be positively impacted. I really made sure 
my ad relevancy was on point, which is why my CTRs are so high here. But when it comes to CTR, what you want to understand is along with the product image, along with the SEO, along with all of the other things which people see on the ad itself, on shopping ads itself, was just essentially this area right here. So they see the product image, they see the title, they see the pricing. You need to take care of some other things as well. So kind of pause this video and see what is standing out to you the most. Is it the ad that is just very simple like this one right here? Or is it some ad like this one where it's just kind of a big, massive ad inside? If you're like most normal advertisers and like most normal people, you probably chose the second option, which is this one right here because the ad size is massive and this is something i always tell even my e-commerce clients under my google ads agency your marketing which i handle ads for and if you're doing by the way thirty thousand dollars or more in sales with google ads or just in general you need a little bit of extra help scaling via google ads go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen but in order to really improve that ttr you need to make your ad size bigger good ways to do that is by making sure you have reviews for your shopping listings in addition also make sure that you're using merchant center promotion so if there's any kinds of promotions any kinds of offers that you want to offer to the customers make sure they're available here so i'm trying to kind of look for those promotions if there's anything that these competitors are offering so really nothing that these competitors are offering which comes to mind but if they were you can see those pop-ups come up on the ad itself for example some of the pop-ups are low price but here if you were using some of the promotions it would be like five percent off ten percent off etc etc but in addition to that another thing you you want to use is the trusted store badge make sure you apply for this experience scorecard program i've already made a video on my channel where it tells you exactly how to do this step by step but right now in 2022 and onwards the best way to improve your ctr is to just appear bigger and the easiest way to do that is use all of the basic opportunities which google merchant center is offering but in addition to all of those things you got to make sure that people actually like your product so if you have a very bad product it doesn't really matter what kind of other things you do sure you might get a few sales here and there but if it's really not a winning product if it's not something people actually want they're not gonna click on it and as a result your ctr is gonna be low which means of course google is not gonna favor you it's not gonna push your listings more towards the front compared to your other competitors so make sure that you also focus on the product make sure you make it better in some way shape or form of course easy ways to do that is by having different images also doing proper seo techniques all of that good stuff but your kind of work does not end there because the next phase where google determines whether you should be in the front with shopping or in the back at the very end of the train is determined by the landing page experience so when a customer goes on your landing page do they just exit out of it really quick because they don't like what they see at all or do they actually interact with your website they click on different buttons they click add to cart they go down your funnel and they do all sorts of these others so landing page experience user experience extremely important with google shopping and it is one of the determining factors of whether you rank in the front or you don't rank in the front so one of the factors is the bounce rate with the landing page itself another one is the website speed and also the overall landing page layout so how is this layout is it just a spammy drop shipping website or is it kind of custom so this is all of these things influence the bounce rate which is then going to influence whether people buy from you or not and whether google shopping pushes you more towards front or not trust me google in the back end is determining all of these things but this kind of brings me to the major point on the list which is bids so again even though i was bidding only about 16 cents 14 cents for these campaigns i didn't actually tell google to hit those bids it was just because i by this time i was already getting pushed more towards the front for a lot of my products i was doing many things right and google just decided to award me but if you remember what i said in the beginning i told you that the bid here was 40 cents and during that time period of 2020 a 40 cent bid was very very competitive it was just an ideal number and that's why google just naturally started to drop my bids over time but this also means that you right now in 2022 and onwards needs to provide google especially if you're doing standard shopping a very competitive bid because if you lowball this and try to put it at like 15 cents just because you want to copy me and copy my results good luck with that by the way but it's just gonna bite you in your behind very very quickly just because again google should be the one dragging your cpcs down you still want to have a very very competitive bid limit so what you want to kind of do is have a bid limit of around 45 cents 50 cents maybe even 60 cents depending on what you're selling and just determine whether that's a good bid for you or not depending on the result so that's exactly what i did fortunately for me 40 cent bid was more than enough and google thought it was so good that it actually started to reward me by making it less than 150 
fourth of what it was. But again, Google will start to do that over time. Make sure it's competitive and also make sure not to bid too much because I know there's some of you that need counseling, by the way. Just kidding. I was part of this audience as well that just believe that the higher you bid, the more sales you're going to get. You have just this mentality of just bidding as high as possible. So you see a 15 cent bid here, you automatically think you're going to bid a dollar, two dollar, five dollars. And just because you bid five dollars, you're now going to get very good results. You're going to outperform me and my results and you're just going to crush it with Google Shopping. Unfortunately, that's really not how it works, because if you do that, 110 percent end up losing money with Google Shopping. After a certain bid limit, you will face diminishing returns. And I have a perfect illustration for you guys to kind of see what I'm talking about. So let's imagine this is the bid line right here. If zero is the zero dollar bid and this is like a one dollar bid or something. And of course, this is an example. Don't think just because the max is one dollar that you should never go above one dollar. In some cases, it is ideal, but you need to find the right bid, which is kind of in this area right here, maybe this area, because as you go forward, you start to get this diminishing return chart right here, this curve right here, where if, for example, this is 50 cents, you're bidding 40 cents right now. So even if you bid like 80 cents right here, 90 cents, you are not going to get more results. In fact, your results are going to start to tank. So this is what diminishing returns mean. It is your goal for your e-commerce brand. And I can't tell you what the ideal bid is because every e-commerce brand is different, but it's your goal to figure out what this number is right here and then do whatever possible to make sure you're within this range. So for me during that time, that was around 40 cents, but just figure out a competitive bid. It's not too difficult to do. It will take time. However, make sure that's done because once you figure that out, then it will be much, much easier for you. And once you're profitable and you just let the campaigns run, Google shopping will start to reward you. It will start to improve your rankings overall. But again, this kind of brings me to the final and most important point, which is having the right campaign strategy. So during that time, as you guys can see, I didn't just have one campaign running. I had multiple different campaigns running just on the screen alone. There were 10. If we kind of change this to maybe 30, we can see overall there were a lot of campaigns spending money and budget during this time period. And these were not random campaigns. I was actually testing different things out. In fact, I had more than 30 campaigns during this time. So again, I was testing different things out, trying to figure out the ideal strategy. And I had this funnelized approach. Again, I'm not going to go too in depth into the actual strategy because there are just too many campaigns for me. But if you're not really wanting to do this yourself, or if you don't know what the right strategy for your brand again go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together to figure out that strategy for you but final approach involves a testing strategy a profitability strategy and a scaling strategy this is a three phase hit and go method as i like to call it because each product goes through these three phases and then at the end it turns out to be a mega million winning product that's basically how i scale this at a 7x row as almost with six hundred thousand dollars in sales so over half a million dollars in sales in just about eight months. But that is pretty much it to this video. Again, not too difficult to rank higher with Google Shopping. You got to take those specific techniques that I mentioned in this video. You got to keep on applying it over and over again until Google Shopping has no other way but to reward you positively. But if you found any type of value in this video, destroy that like button and destroy that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video.